welcome to the training cold chain logistic and now this module is on refrigerated transport so i shall be talking about the refrigerated transport system so the we are having the different types of refrigerated transport system and that may be uh, i mean container type and uh, the trailer type so trailer type is generally loaded on the rail and which is transported by the rail transport system and the trailer which is on the road wedge so uh, and the refer vehicles uh, have um, which is attached with the container actually so refer vehicles have similar constructions to normal freight vehicle except three fundamental differences are as under insulation circulation of cool air through and around the cargo masonry for cooling as far as the design and the performance differences of refer vehicles are concerned which may be the extreme exterior conditions temperature air pressure relative humidity vibration radiant heat etc another difference may be carrying conditions in terms of temperature and relative humidity insulation properties like thermal conductivity moisture permeability and retention adhesion chemical and physical stability cost and presence of material infiltration of air and moisture construction and operating cost that lead to the value engineering now as we have seen in the previous slide that a trailer rail car and now we we shall be talking on specifically one by one that is trailer rail car and container design and construction so refrigerated containers and the trailers intermodal shipping container we can have refer unit is attached with the container compartment refrigerated containers have the three main components refrigeration system which generates conditions air second microprocessor controller which is having the data logger and monitor different parameters during shipping third one air circulation system and this is actually for circulate air from front refer unit to the side wall and doors through floor and return to refer unit as if you see the size container size and dimensions then the length internal length could be 19.4 feet and uh, uh, for another that is 40 feet container we can have the 39.5 feet internal width 7.8 feet uh, second one may be of uh, 7.9 feet internal height that is 7.9 feet and uh, for the second one 7.9 feet air weight and the poly load capacity and the pallets so these are the certain uh, container size which is having the different uh, dimensions and having the different design considerations which are listed over here other thing that the refer trailer contains refer unit and an insulated trailer on wheels mostly used for truck transport air flow horizontally using air delivery suit located the ceiling which you can see if uh, there are uh, you can see the refer trailers over here and the air delivery suit so the inside view and uh, the pictorial uh, view of the refer trailers we can see over here in this slide now the multi temperature refrigerated trailers okay so the different temperature different compartments may be there and we can manage we can we can set the different temperatures as well so trailer divided normally into two or three compartments frozen foods generally the temperature is around minus 18, 18 degrees celsius chilled foods the temperature is 4 degrees celsius sensitive or dry foods around uh, temperature we maintain 12 degrees celsius popular for and these are very much popular for fast foods and the grocery store product shipping here uh, we can see multi temperature refrigerated trailers where the different compartments are there which is having the different temperature which are uh, generally used for the different and different uh, for different food products okay 
the components uh, like uh, the multiple refrigerated units, movable insulated uh, bulkhead, movable evaporator at ceiling, side doors for loading and unloading. Refrigerator rail cars, same component as a container, a top air delivery system that is a vented air delivery plenum attached to the ceiling. On the top, we can see the refrigerator uh, rail cars. As I initially said, that uh, uh, what uh, what is the difference between trailer uh, and container? Okay, so here uh, mainly the trailer is actually uh, attached or even loaded on the rail cars as well. Okay. Electric powered system, vehicle powered uh, systems we can say, uses vehicles engine to drive the compressor using belt or pulley. Other components, uh, other, other component use vehicles electrical battery, normally used for local delivery via small trucks and vans. The electric current output of this vehicle battery charging alternator is increased and, and, and it is for to enhance the load of evaporator and condenser. A static converter can be insulated between alternate and refrigeration unit. An intermediate DC circuit is used to maintain constant DC voltage for conditioning system. A static converter used to maintain constant voltage for intermediate circuit. Here we can see in this slide through the figures the engine driven system compressor run by engine and other components by vehicle batteries. Second one we can see uh, electric engine driven system powered by an electric alternator connected to the trucks and the engine. So there are two systems that we can see over here. Now we shall talk about that is the insulation. So in insulations to retard and why it is required actually, what are the importance of the insulations? Okay, so insulations to retard the heat flow through the floors, walls, doors and ceiling which ultimately increases the energy efficiency. U factor which is coefficient of heat transfer, that is overall uh, coefficient of heat transfers uh, through the um, body of uh, equipment. The lower the U factor, better the insulation quality. Definitely so most of the reefer vehicle uses polyurethane foam so for this the u factors of insulations decreases over time so increase air transfer and leakage increase fuel requirement and 5% degrade, degradation every year so there is there is advice what kind of it is so purchase insulation material more than required quantity so that at a certain interval of time we can uh, do the management and we can uh, do the manage we can do the management of this uh, material after certain level of time here uh, we can see the fast and efficient roof repair so these are the uh, certain materials now liner bond permanently bonds aluminium roofs and inside liner panels for the door we can see door, side wall, radius panel, floor and ceiling insulation, how it is done. Okay, so side wall, strengthening and insulations. So these are the different uh, components and where the insulation material is required. So in this figure, we can understand, understand what are the different zones where we can uh, use and what kind of materials we can use and, uh, as an insulation so that uh, the machine as well as the energy efficiency, as well as the system efficiency can be increased. Modes of transportation. So we can see here the transportation by the rail, transportation by the roadways, transport, uh, transportation by the sea, okay, and even uh, the transportation by the airways. So the different transportation system we can see over here and how it is sometimes it may be correlated and connected as well. Okay, so through this we can see that the, uh, the first material is being loaded on the truck. Now it is going uh, to be transported to the rail and in the second one you can see uh, through the truck now it is coming to the shipment and is going to the sea. Okay. 
there are a number of shipping modes available for long distance or another part of the world uh, one shipping method might not be enough so the freight will move via road and ascend combining these modes can get complicated for the shipper as well so as a solution logistic companies classify their service in two modes one is intermodal and other is the multimodal concept so the difference among the intermodal and the multimodal is a carrier who moves your goods in intermodal there are different carriers for different shipping modes which generates separate bill and reports from each individual carrier but in case of the multimodal transportation which is a process of moving cargo in a single container from door to door by combining land transport road or rail and sea transport uh, that is in terms of the vessel or the ship uh, in one transportation chain in a multimodal all modes of shipment are carried out by one carrier and uh, therefore whole shipment will be signed under a single bill okay so sea or air freight gives you security scalability and economic efficiency freight via uh, road and rail lets you reach rural areas so the top commodities which we uh, can even uh, see in terms of uh, uh, that the cargo uh, theft types uh, maybe the theft from the facility hijacking and the theft from the container theft from the vehicle so in terms of the percentage uh, the cargo theft types we can see 29% uh, from the top to the bottom it is going to be decreased decreased 29 to 27%, 9%. So at sea, the cargo is moved in a sealed and a steel containers without any handling in between. Lower the risk of contamination and the loss of cargo as it reduces the human touch points along the shipments. A single vessel can transport the equivalent of 700 truckloads. Okay. So large scale operations and the efficient utilization of the vessel can reduce the shipping cost while the allowing for flexible shipments. So multimodal transport is a best effective uh, alternative to traditional road transport system. So this is about the whole uh, refrigerated transport system. So we have seen the different modes and uh, uh, the very partial, uh, even partially we have discussed about the requirements in the refrigerated transport as well. Okay. So I hope uh, all of you would be benefited through the lecture and you will get a good idea about the refrigerated transport system. Thank you.